Well, hey everyone, and welcome to our physics homework tutorial. Uh, we hope you find this tutorial helpful in your study of physics, and if you do, please visit our website at www.physicsvodcast.com. There you're going to find over 200 physics examples in every topic of physics. Uh, it's sure to help you get through that physics homework. We'll see you then! Hey everyone, here's your Sioux Falls physics teachers. Today, looking at the idea of Lenz's Law. We have a rectangular wire loop in a magnetic field, and points Y and Z are pulled tight so that the area of the loop becomes zero. Determine the direction of the current through the resistor. Now, a Lenz's Law problem doesn't really have a lot of detailed calculations, but again, remember, it's actually a fairly complex process to figure out what direction that current is going to go. In this case, we have a resistor. That resistor is located down here in the wire loop. And the problem simply says, determine the direction of the current through that resistor. Well, out to the side over here, we have our kind of list of steps that we want to use for Lenz's Law. The first thing is to determine if the magnetic flux increases or decreases. Remember our equation for magnetic flux? It is simply magnetic flux equals B times A, or magnetic field times area. So for step number one here, when it says determine if the magnetic flux increases or decreases, we simply want to look at these two factors to see which one is changing. And in this particular case, in the problem, it tells us that points Y and Z are pulled tight so that this area that we have right now becomes zero. So the area here is decreasing. There is no change mentioned to the magnetic field. So that means that our magnetic flux is decreasing. Now the next step then is to determine the direction of the induced magnetic field. Remember for a Lenz's Law problem, you actually have two magnetic fields to consider. One is the magnetic field that is already mentioned in the problem. In this case, that's a magnetic field that already exists. It is into the page. Next, we want to look at the magnetic field that is created by the induced current. And to decide what direction this is, we need to see how it compares to the magnetic field that we already have. So if we go back to step one, notice that our magnetic flux is decreasing. The induced magnetic field here will act to actually oppose that chain. So notice then that there is nothing in step one that can directly tell us what direction step two's induced magnetic field will be. But what it can tell us is whether the induced magnetic field here in step two will be in the same direction or the opposite direction as the already existing magnetic field. So when you are trying to determine the direction in step two, you will always have two possibilities. Either the new induced magnetic field will be the same as what's already there, or it will be the opposite as what's already there. In this case, the magnetic flux is decreasing. In order for our induced magnetic field to oppose that change, our induced magnetic field must provide us more of the same. So in other words, if this magnetic flux that we have over here is going down, it's kind of like the reasoning is the only way to counteract that change is to try and make more of the same type of magnetic field we already have. So to summarize step two then, 
we can write this statement that we have right here. The magnetic field that is induced, that is the new magnetic field that's being created by the current, is in the same direction as the existing magnetic field. So now that tells us that over here in this region, and remember that flux is only important inside the loop. So we're not dealing with any of this area outside the loop, but inside the loop we have an additional induced magnetic field that is in the in direction. So again we can mark that with an X. Inside this loop we need a magnetic field that is in. That means we're ready for step three. We've determined that we need an inward magnetic field inside the loop. Now we need to determine the direction of the induced current that will produce that. And remember that when we have an induced current, a current itself creates a new magnetic field. And right hand rule number two, so that is the right hand rule with the closed fist, that is the right hand rule that helps us determine what direction that magnetic field is. So our resistors down here, uh, that means our two options are we either have current flowing to the left or current flowing to the right. And so what we'll do is we'll check those both with right hand rule number two and see which one allows us to produce the correct induced magnetic field. Now again, remember for right hand rule number two that you want a closed fist. Your thumb is sticking out. That's the direction of the current. So we'll try this to the left first. If we line our thumb up to the left and coil our fingers as if they were coiling around the resistor or around the wire, we find that they coil in on top and out underneath. Okay, so that would again, remember, produce two different directions of magnetic field. If we go to the left, we would have an inward direction. So that's an X on the top. And notice that that is what we want. Now, don't get confused by the fact that underneath the wire, so down here, that same current does produce magnetic field coming out. However, all we're interested in is that we have the correct magnetic field up here, and that is in the inwards direction. So already we can see then that our answer is that the induced current must be flowing through the left through that resistor. If we wanted to, we could do a quick double check here of the other direction and see what happens if it's to the right. Notice that in that case, we would line our thumb up to the right. Uh, notice that in this case, our fingers would be coiling in under the wire, and on top of the wire, they would be coming out. So that would give us the reverse situation of what we want. Um, which is just kind of further confirmation that our current flows through the left through the resistor.